Hello again folks, uh, welcome to this third video on the reverse chain rule um, and in this video we're going to be looking at integrating rational functions where the numerator is a m multiple of the derivative of the denominator. So if we had a function, a rational function with a function f of x at the bottom then we would need the derivative or some multiple of it in the numerator. Um, I'm just going to explain where this comes from, this idea, um, because it's perhaps not as obvious as the others. But you have already met uh, the, uh, the, the fact that if y equals ln x, uh, if y equals the natural log of x, then dy by dx equals 1 over x. That's an idea you've seen before. Um, so we can extend that using, or sorry, first, yeah, we can say that the converse must be true. Therefore, the integral of 1 over x must be equal to ln x, yeah, plus the constant. Um, we can use the chain rule to differentiate slightly more complex functions. So if we had y equals ln of 3x minus 2, then when you differentiate that using the chain rule, um, you should find that you end up with 3 over 3x minus 2. Note for this derivative, it is of the form uh, f dashed of x over f of x. So f of x at the bottom is 3x minus 2. At the top, we've got the derivative of that function, which is just 3. Um, so what we can say is that if we integrate this type of function, then we're just going to get ln of the numerator, the function in the numerator, plus c. All right. And in fact, we can extend that a bit because constants we know we can just take out. So if we if the numerator was a multiple of the derivative of the of the numerator uh, denominator, sorry, then we could just take out that constant. And we know that this part, the integral is just ln of f of x. So we can say the whole integral would be a ln f of x plus the constant. All right, so we're always looking out for these rational functions where the numerator is the derivative of the denominator or a multiple of the derivative of the denominator. Um, we're going to start off using the GDA method and then I'm actually going to show you a slightly different way that you might prefer to set these ones out. But uh, in the end, uh, both methods are absolutely fine. So GDA, remember, guess, differentiate, just. Let's go into an example. So here we've got a function. <clears throat> it's a rational function. The denominator, the f of x here is 1 minus x. Hopefully you're happy that if we differentiate the denominator we would get negative 1. And at the top here we've got 7. That's definitely a multiple of the denominator. Sorry, uh, the derivative of the denominator. All right. So uh, for our guess, I'm just going to ignore that constant, as I always do, and just say my guess is going to be ln of the denominator. So ln of 1 minus x. I can then differentiate that function. And if I differentiate that, I end up with negative 1 at the top and then 1 minus x in the denominator. So I've just used the chain rule to differentiate that function. Um, and I put the negative as uh, negative the whole thing, uh, but it'd be fine to leave it in the top. I then look at this function, my derivative, and see what I have to do to get my original function. And hopefully you're happy that if I multiply this function here by negative 7, I would end up with this function. So therefore we have to multiply our guess by negative 7. So we can say that the integral of our function is negative 7 lots of ln of 1 minus x plus c. All right. Um, we put uh, the uh, modulus symbols here. Don't worry too much about that at the moment. Uh, that will become clearer to you later on. OK, let's look at a slightly trickier one. Uh, so here, the denominator, we've got a quadratic. We've got 5x squared minus 2. If we differentiate that, it gives us 10x. So up here, it looks like we've got some sort of multiple of that 10x. So our guess is just going to be ln of the denominator. 
we use the chain rule to, to differentiate that, which means the 10x is going to come out on top and then the 5x squared minus 2 at the bottom. So what do I have to do to get from my derivative to the original function? Well, I've got to divide it by 10 and then multiply by 3, which is the same as multiplying by 3 tenths. So I need to multiply my guess by 3 tenths and add my constant. And that will be the answer to our integral. OK, um, I just want to show you, as I said, a different way of setting it out. Um, because what I like to do with this type of uh, function using the reverse chain rule is actually just rewrite the integral so that the numerator is the exact derivative of the denominator. So here the exact derivative of the denominator is negative 1 but at the top I've got 7. So we know that we can take constants out of uh, any integral. So if I want to write it like this so now the numerator is the derivative of the denominator. I need to think about what constant I can put out here so that it is still equal to this function here. And hopefully you're happy that negative 7 times by the negative 1 at the top would work. So I need to put a negative 7 out the front. And now I can say, well, this integral here I know is just ln of the denominator. So we can straight away just write down negative 7 lots of ln of the denominator plus the constant. All right, so obviously the answer exactly the same as the last method, but a slightly different way of setting it out. Um, looking at the second example down here, um, if I differentiate the denominator, I get 10x. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite it with 10x at the top, but then I need to think about what constant I need to put out here so that it's still equal to the original integral. So if you think about it, hopefully you're happy that if we put 3 tenths outside, then when I multiply these, um, it would indeed give me the 3x. So now I know that for this integral, because the numerator is the derivative of the denominator, that whole integral is just ln of the denominator um, plus c. So I could straight away just write down 3 tenths times ln of the denominator and then plus c. So it's just a slightly different way of writing it. Like I said, same answer of course, but um, both ways are absolutely fine. You've just got to decide which one works for you better. Um, so just wanted to look at a slightly less obvious one to look out for. So here we've got the integral of tan x, um, which you might not have covered before. Um, but we know that tan x can be written as sine x over cosine x. And if you see it looking like this, you might spot now that the numerator is kind of the derivative of the denominator. In fact, it's not quite the derivative of cosine x is negative sine of x, so it's not quite right, but it's not far off. What we could do is rewrite it with to make the sorry the numerator the exact derivative of the denominator, and then out the front here we would need another negative to cancel with that one. So we can say it's negative all of that. This integral here is just ln of the denominator so we can say that the integral of tan x is actually negative ln of cosine x plus a constant all right and that's uh, given to you in the formula book i believe but here is just a way of showing where that comes from um, you can use a very similar idea to think about cotex. Uh, cotex, if you haven't met that before, is the same as 1 over tan x. So 1 over tan x is equivalent to cosine x over sine x. So just pause the video, see if you can carry on through this one, and then come back and uh, see how you've got on. OK, so for this one, uh, straight away if you look, the numerator is the derivative of the denominator, 
So in fact, for this one, we can straight away just write down that it must be ln of the denominator, ln of sine x plus c. Uh, that's it for this type. So that's the last of the videos on the reverse chain rule. Um, we've looked at all three different types, uh, two different ways of setting this last type out. But like I said, you just choose which works for you. OK, thank you very much.